How you doing, you beautiful rejects? Are you tired of messing with your settings mid-mission and getting shanked up your bum just trying to get a few more FPS? And either the game looks good, but it's a bit of a slideshow. Or in the pursuit of those FPS, you end up making your game look like Papa Nurgle's ass cheeks on a CRT monitor. Then this video is for you, brother. Starting off, we have FOV. Now, I know some guides will say, Oh no, don't turn this up, it will affect both your CPU and GPU, so you shouldn't raise it. Ignore them. While technically that's true, the small hit you will take, if you even take a hit at all, is basically unnoticeable. Meanwhile, the setting can actually have a dramatic effect on your enjoyment or even just your health, since if it's too high or low, it can give you headaches, eye strain, whatever else. I recommend setting this to whatever is your heart's content. Then we have resolution. Just set this to whatever your monitor's native resolution is. Nothing higher, nothing lower. If you set it higher, it'll just eat performance for no real reason. And if it's lower, it'll just look blurry for no real reason. Screen mode. You can choose either full screen or borderless full screen. Full screen will usually have a small performance advantage over borderless, but if you find yourself alt tabbing out from the game a lot, you can just go borderless. It'll be a couple FPS, maybe like three, four, five. Not that big a deal. V-Sync, turn this off. Nobody uses V-Sync these days. Come on, man. Brightness, this can be whatever you feel like, bud. And now to the real meat and potatoes. Performance. So first we'll have DLSS and FSR. And sad to say, these are essential if you want to have decent performance in this game. Luckily though, you can just think of it as an anti-aliasing option that actually improves performance, since that's effectively what it is. The only downside being some shimmering and some bouncy scenes, such as the Valkyrie loading screen. Other than that, it looks pretty good. If you have a 2000 series or higher NVIDIA GPU, use DLSS. And if you have anything else, use FSR 2.0. For DLSS, I personally recommend Balanced or Performance. Ultra Performance will look far too terrible and it's not really worth using. Performance will look a bit blurry in comparison to Balanced, but it may give enough FPS to help hit your goal without looking that much worse. Balanced, as its name implies, is the best compromise between performance and visuals, and I'd definitely start here. It does look noticeably better than Performance while giving a very notable performance gain over Native. Personally, I would not have recommended quality a few days ago, but the recent update seems to have helped its performance. Before, it would cost about 10 to 15 FPS more than balance, while only looking perhaps 5% better. Now it's closer to about 5 to 10 FPS less than balance, on my setup anyways, while looking pretty nice and crispy. So you can give this a try if you like. For FSR, essentially, this is the same concept as DLSS, but any GPU can use it. It looks fairly visually similar, aside from perhaps being a little bit sharper in the tuning. For NVIDIA Reflex, I recommend setting this to Enabled. Since frames are relatively low in this game, the effect of this is pretty noticeable for input lag. For Enable Plus Boost, this can potentially have improvements if your CPU is particularly old compared to your GPU. Since if your GPU is downclocking a lot or you set a cap and your GPU is not running at full power, it can potentially cause some frame rate instability. So turning Linux on will keep your GPU running at higher power so that it doesn't throttle as much. For a frame rate cap, you can either set this to whatever is closest to your monitor's refresh rate, or set it to whatever is your closest average FPS for a smoother experience. There's no 75 or 90 FPS option, however, so you could also consider adding a frame rate limit through your graphics software or Steam launch options. Personally, I'd recommend finding out what your frames drop to in demanding scenarios like hordes, and set the frame rate cap somewhere in the ballpark of that. Now we have Sharpen. I recommend keeping this on. It helps make the game look nice and crispy clear, and doesn't have a big performance hit. If you turn it off, it's mostly just going to make your game look blurry, which I don't recommend. Anti-aliasing, this stays off with DLSS and FSR 2.0. And then we have, um, hmm, that's weird. I could have sworn there were some graphics settings here, but I don't seem to see anything. Huh. But no, seriously. If you want to run RTX and have a smooth experience, you're, um, going to need some mighty powerful sorcery. And by sorcery, I mean a bottomless wallet filled with money. If you don't have that, just slap a big fat off on all these and pretend this section doesn't exist. Alright, advanced graphics. Ambient occlusion. I recommend setting this to at least low, not off. Setting this to low is what makes your game look like a PlayStation 2 game. So do not turn it off. It's not that demanding on low, but it adds quite a lot to the visuals of the game. Likewise, medium to high do add detail, but the performance to visuals ratio isn't quite as good. So if you're hitting your performance goals and want slightly better shadows, you can raise these if you like, with medium having a bigger jump in visuals than high. Light quality. Now, low was good before, 
for ambient inclusion, but do not turn this to low. This setting on low makes the graphics look like they were all created by someone who doesn't thin their paints, and this is quite possibly the most important setting for the visuals of the game without having that big of a performance cost. I recommend setting this as high as you can and only lower it if you need a bit more FPS to reach your performance goal. Even the difference from low to extreme isn't that big of a performance hit. So just blast this up, brother. Next, we have volumetric fog quality. This one can be a bit of a personal taste, but I personally recommend medium or low. Just know that those two settings will drastically change how your game looks. This is a very important setting for the atmosphere of the game, so I'd personally recommend keeping it on medium, especially since it doesn't have that big of a performance cost. Now, if you want more visual fidelity and are willing to sacrifice the atmosphere of the game, you can turn this to low if you really want that competitive edge in a PvE game. I'd say high and extreme are a bit unnecessary as they don't seem to have a very large effect on visuals, but do cost a more noticeable amount of frames, um, though there is a small difference between high, so if you have some wiggle room, you could maybe consider turning it to high. Depth of field? Like, come on, dude. No one likes the setting. I've never met anyone who likes the setting. Just turn it off. And if you like the setting, you turn it off too. Stop it. Is is chaos messing with your brain? Are you a heretic? Because this setting is heresy. Global illumination. Leave this on high. It costs practically nothing, but makes the game look a lot nicer with improved and brighter lighting. Turning this to low will just make your game look a little bit worse, on top of making it harder to see since the lights are not as bright. Bloom. Leave it on. Costs basically nothing, but gives light sources a nice and realistic glow. Otherwise, they look a little bit flat and lifeless. Skin subsurface scattering. This setting makes skin and bald green heads look a bit more realistic in how they are lit. Though fairly subtle, this can make a decent improvement in how your character looks, especially around their face. So if you like looking at your character a lot, you can consider turning this on. However, my main problem with the setting is that, though it's normally low in cost in most areas if you only have a dozen or so bald heads on screen, my issue is when there are a hundred bald heads on screen. This might eat into your performance more than it's worth, especially compared to how much visual quality you get since this is not really a setting you'll notice much while you're playing the game. I would personally recommend turning this off unless you really like looking at your character's face. Motion blur. Oh, oh shit. shit, here we go again. Turn it off. It'll just give you headaches and it looks terrible. Always turn this off. Unless it's a racing game. Then maybe it's acceptable. But otherwise, no. Screen space reflections. Alright, I'm going to recommend you turn this off. It adds subtle and improved reflections on things that should be reflecting, such as metallic surfaces and the like. When it's off, some surfaces can look slightly dull in comparison, but it's not as large of a difference as you expect. The problem with this setting is there are some areas in maps where they went a bit overboard with reflections, so while it normally doesn't have that big of a performance hit, it can make your frames even less stable depending on the room you're in. Lens quality! Turn this off. It eats performance, it just makes things blurry, and it hurts your eyeballs. Turn it off. I don't know why people want to replicate camera lenses to begin with, but hey. Lens flare, I recommend you turn this off. Unless you want to burn your eyeballs. And if you do, we have that already. It's called a holy flamer. Except you burn the enemy's eyeballs with holy fire. Scatter density. Personally, I would leave this off. It's supposed to add junk and stuff to the ground to make it look a little bit more realistic with trash, debris, whatever, but turning it off there's hardly a noticeable difference in visual quality, and it's one of the only ways to give your CPU some more performance. Even with it off, there's still little nuts and bolts and trash everywhere on the ground, so I'm not really sure there's much of a point to it, honestly. If there's an outdoor map with foliage and the like in the future, I would then maybe consider turning this back on, but for now, I'd say leave this off. Now for some of the important parts, the horde settings. I recommend you to lower these because these are all the settings that get more demanding with hordes, which is where most of your FPS gets eaten by rotting pimple puss enjoyers. Ragdoll, I recommend lowering this depending on the beefiness of your CPU. If you got a real nice beefy modern CPU that perhaps has an overclock, you can keep this a bit higher, otherwise I would lower it down. I will say lowering it can have a noticeable effect on the visuals of the game because if there's a lot of enemies and they get blown up, they tend to just disappear if this setting is really low. On the reverse, having it too high can cause big frame hitches when anything explodes. So I'd recommend anywhere around 6 to 15 if you want that to stay not that noticeable, but still get performance improvements for hordes. Weapon decals are cool effects like blue scorch marks from a plasma gun, cuts from melee weapons, cool stuff like that. You'll probably only notice these immediately after you hit an enemy, so you can lower this a little bit more without noticing a big drop in quality. 
For blood decals, I recommend keeping it a bit higher than whatever you set your weapon decals to, since it's going to be a bit more jarring having blood appear and disappear quickly in a big horde, and it just looks a bit more satisfying whenever you're finished purging a large group of heretics. As for decal lifetime, I'd say just keep this as high as you'd like. If your GPU can handle 20 decals at a time, then it's not a big deal if they sit there for 20, 30, 60, whatever seconds. The cap is still going to be 20 regardless. So just set this to whatever you think will be the amount of time you enjoy looking at the carnage that you have wrought. As for the gore settings, this is mostly personal preference. Though if you turn these off, I'd question what you're doing playing this game. The only exception would perhaps be ragdoll interaction since it doesn't have a very noticeable effect and it might save you very marginal CPU performance. Also, if you'd like to remove the camera wobble effects, go to interface, then accessibility, and camera sway intensity. Then just lower it as you'd like. Now, if you reach your performance goals and find yourself having a little more wiggle room to make the game look nicer, I would recommend increasing the settings in this order for the best performance to visual ratio. Firstly, if you haven't, increase light quality as high as possible. Then I would raise ambient inclusion to medium. Then raise DLSS or FSR to quality. Then skin subsurface scattering on if it's not. Then ambient inclusion to high. Volumetric fog quality to high. Then finally screen space perfections to medium. As for anything else, I don't think it's quite worth it to raise, at least currently. There's still one more important setting I need to mention outside of your game. You can find it in the launcher settings and it's called Worker Threads. This setting can have a drastic performance effect on your game, especially in terms of stability and smoothness. I don't really understand why, but there is a certain number of cores that will perform noticeably better than every other setting. It's almost always with the worker count being lowered. For me, I tried 10, then 6 to 8 worker threads and had small improvements. Then finally I tried 9 and that was just the magical number for me. The game ran much smoother with far less hitches after that. I'm not certain to exactly why this is, but I'd recommend lowering the threads by one until you find the right one for your CPU. Alright, that's all I've got for you. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please consider subscribing. There will be a lot of Dark Tide content to come, though it may come a bit slower than I'd like since I'm still pretty new at this whole editing thing. But anyways, thanks for watching. And the Emperor protects. Except for you, Papo!